I'm gonna need a drink for this video, so yeah. Hello my Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? My name is Ashley. If you're new around here, I'm a soil scientist by formal education with a minor in plant science. And on this channel, we talk about all things gardening, houseplants, and in between. We look at the science and we apply it and put it to test in some theories. We disprove some old wives tales, but then we also bring some new ideas into the mix. So today we're talking about miracle Grow cacti succulent mix and now i used this in my video yesterday to plant a succulent bowl for canadian summer and i will leave that video in the link below but you noticed i heavily modified that soil and there is a reason because i am less than pleased with this mix now do i think it would work in a san diego summer in a terracotta pot absolutely but it is not engineered for cold climate gardeners or canadians so in this video we're looking over the what why and how of what we need to be able to plant and grow succulents summer and winter all year round so the first thing we look at when we look at a succulent soil regardless of it if it's a miracle grow or if it is a pro mix which i have heard is a little bit better if this video gets to 50 likes i will review that pro mix soil and we will see if it is better or just as bad as the miracle grow mix but um, what we want to do is we want to do something i like to call a squeeze test that means we're testing how easily it absorbs water how much water it retains and then also how quickly it falls apart and we're going to do that test at the end of this video when we actually build our own cactus mix using a variety of different amendments soil amendments you can find in your yard in your home you probably already have on hand if you are a gardener of some sort when we do the squeeze test what we're looking for is soil porosity we're looking for the amount of air and air exchange in between the pores if we're holding structure really well clay content is very high in that soil or organic material content is very high in that soil meaning our soil porosity is very very tiny but very heavily frequent throughout the entire soil Therefore, we get more capillary action, we get more moisture retention. We want to try to avoid that. We want bigger air spaces so there's less capillary action and that soil profile is completely reliant on gravity. And therefore, when we water from the top, it goes all the way to the bottom and back out the other end. Why do we want that when we have succulents? Well, we have a lot of horizontal roots. Those horizontal roots are completely engineered to act almost like an umbrella so that when the rainfall hits the roots, it's quickly absorbed. Those roots will never penetrate deep below the surface. You will never find a tap root on most succulents. The reason being is they don't want to dig for the water. They just want to catch whatever is passing through. Therefore, if we saturate those roots or we trap those roots underground, under high humidity we get something called root rot so we need to design a soil that allows the water to pass through like rain these roots are specifically engineered it is a phenotype that is designed into the succulent plant that the roots act like this this is very important to remember they don't want to change their rooting habits and we don't want them to either we want to work with them so since they're designed to catch water on the run we want to provide them that water on the run when we test the structure and if it sticks together that means that it has a lot of integral structure to it that means it's more likely to compact over time with water weight and just natural gravitational pull however we don't want that structure because succulent roots since they grow horizontally are a community root system they're meant to be put in tight quarters closely packed in with one another they tend to form a net and that net is what holds them all down together think of it as one person you pick them up it's easy to pick up but if we all linked arms it would be very difficult for one person to uproot us. It's the same thing with succulents. That's why we put them in at such a high volume. You see succulent bowls that are completely 
put together and plastered together and the reason being is that's what the roots want that is what the plant wants to thrive in so let's go do that test we were talking about let's go test the soil structure the moisture retention and see how we can modify that with just things we find laying around the house so as you can see here we have some really basic just stuff that we do find laying around the house i have some of that succulent mix sitting here in a bowl with a little bit of water now you see how this is floating? This is a very high inorganic material. And I wanna show you something that soil scientists will actually do. What we'll do when we're looking at the soils, we'll take a tiny pinch of it, put it in the palm of our hand and we'll roll it around. When we roll it around like this, we're able to see how much organic matter is in here, how much clay, how much sand, how much structure there is to the soil. As you can see, there's lots of sticks and all these little threads are is organic material now you can kind of feel some sand in there rolling around between your fingers but it's not enough for what we need it to do so this is how a soil scientist would look at a soil there's no clay in here or there's very little clay if there was clay my my hand would be black so i'll actually show you a clip of that in my soil science series i've been working on um, doing some tests and i have some footage of a clay soil in my hand as i'm rubbing it around so be sure to tap that subscribe button if you want to see videos on different soil types so this is high organic material low in sand and this is not what we want and i will show you why i take this soil out and i squeeze it I get a lot of water but beyond that it holds its structure that means it's going to compact over time with water gravity and just natural processes and this is not what we want so let's look at the steps to revitalize a soil from this to something that is better for succulents so these are some just household stuff you should have laying around if you are a gardener these are just wood chips. These are the same landscaping wood chips you would use anywhere you can. This is just aquarium gravel. You can get it smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. And this is just perlite. And you should all be very familiar with perlite. At the end of this video, I will have a screenshot sheet you can use. You can screenshot that. It's going to show you the different parts to mix. So for every cup of potting soil, I will have the amount of each one of these ingredients you should put in as well. So use that as your guide. So this is the cacti potting mix. It's the same stuff. And I'm just going to show you how we change it from a structure holding soil to a looser area soil. So we can add for every cup of perlite or of potting mix, for every cup of potting mix, we can add half a cup of perlite. This alone would make a difference. See the frequency of perlite in that soil? That's going to be enough to loosen this up. See that compared to this? This is already drying out. This still has water in it. Now if we want to do one better, we add our perlite in and then we would add a quarter cup wood chips. This again, it's not going to add nutrients, it's just going to loosen up our structure. It's, and then we can add some rocks in and break it up even further. Let's take a look at this. So see this? Give it a squeeze. Easily falling apart. The soil porosity is larger in here, the air exchange is larger, and that therefore means it's going to dry out quicker. Do you see? Kind of just holds its structure. Do you see the difference in these two containers? Now, if you wanted, you could just add the rocks to the top. You don't have to add the rocks, you don't have to add the wood chips. You can customize this to what you need and what your succulent is telling you it needs. If it's constantly dry, you may need less wood chips or less rocks. If it's constantly wet, you may want to add more. You need to adjust it based on what your succulent needs in your area. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Ella thinks it was helpful, don't you, Ella? 
If you thought that was helpful, be sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, share. If this video gets enough likes and enough comments, let's set the bar at 50 likes. I'll do a pro mix soil review just to let you know my thoughts on it. But I will see you guys tomorrow with a petunia video, the top three best petunias to grow if you live in Canada or a cold climate. And those three petunias have been selected based on hardiness, availability at a grocery store in Canada, and then thirdly, growth habits. So see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Oh, hey there. Are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome content.